So we are now on step five of this tutorial where we are going to create a form with collaborative features. That is, we're going to allow the users to see what the other users are doing in real time. That's pretty cool, very easy to do actually with Vine. So let's jump right into the code. So let's say we don't want this option here. They want to create a new um, book. We don't want it here in this screen. We want to redirect to another uh, view and make that collaborative. How can we do that? First, we need to hide this option, but that's very simple. If we go to the code admin view where I have the grid crud, we can just say crud.set add operation visible false. So it's not going to show that. And instead, we want to get the um, crud layout, which is the organic kind of the um, the component that contains all these all the components and the arrangement there. Uh, and we're going to add a toolbar component. A toolbar component is something shown next to these buttons here. And we can add just a new uh, router link, which accepts text first, new book, and then we can pass a component. So let's say this is new view.class, which doesn't exist. But again, we can just create it there in the same package. So it's right here, new view. Let's map this to new. So it's slash new again. Instead of component, we're going to use vertical layout. And just to quickly check that this works, let's add a title here, new h1, new book. Let's compile this and we should get a link here that goes to the new book. But I want to show you something as well. So new book, it says could not navigate to new, recent access denied. So that's important. Security is, is working. <laughs> um, roles allowed. We need to allow the group of admin users here, right? So now I should be able to go there. Very good. So we have that in place. Now we want to create this form from scratch. Let's create all the fields, the input fields here. Private text field. So one for the title. Title, private. Uh, what else was there? Let me actually refresh my memory. Uh, title published and rating. So this would be a date picker for published, new date picker, and we need one uh, integer field or the rating. Something important is that the names of the identifiers here match the exact name of the properties in the book class, because we are going to do some data binding here. But for that, let's add those um, those fields to the vertical layout. But I'm not going to add them directly there. I'm going to create first a form layout. And then we can add the title, published, and rating components here. Of course, we need to separate these guys from with or with a comma. We probably also need uh, the... Uh, title before the form, so let's change the position of that. And we will need a new button to save uh, to save the, the changes. Mm. Let's check that the UI looks the way we want. There we go. So you have all the components here. This is a date picker. And the cool thing about the uh, where is it? Form layout is that it's responsive. So for example, if I make this window narrow, you see how it changes. So this maybe would be how the application would be presented in a mobile device. And you can configure the, the, the number of columns here. It's called steps or responsive steps and several other things in this form layout if you want. Um, okay, so if we click this, it doesn't work. So we need to first bind the values in these input fields 
to an instance of book, right? So to, to the corresponding properties in an object of this type. How to do that? Actually, it's pretty simple. We need a new binder here. And binder is a helper class. It's not a UI component, it's just a helper class. And we specify the uh, bin type, which is book dot class. Scroll this binder. Mm, and now we say bind instance fields. And we pass this instance. So this means bind the instance fields, which are these, or of this class, which are these, or object, to the corresponding getters and setters in the book, because we have it here, right? In the book class or object that we are going to create later. Um, that's it. So it's with this, it creates automatically create the bindings. What what it means in practice? That means that when when we change the value here in the browser, when we change this value, it's going to be reflected in the title property of the book uh, object. Same with published and rating, but we need to we need to actually tell it to do so, uh, and we want to do that when we click or when the user clicks the button, which is this, this is a click listener. I'll show you here the um, constructor. It's an event listener and it's a click event. So when we click the button, we get here and we need to, we need to uh, create a new book somehow, right? Because we need to save it to, to, to the database. So this is the book, but we need to set the values. And instead of using like uh, set title and then title.getValue and so forth, because what if the form is huge? Instead of that, we use the binder. And we can read the bin or we can write the bin also if, if valid. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail of the if valid part. There's something called, there's something called um, validators that we're not going to cover here. But uh, if it's valid, just write the bin. Which bin? This. So it's gonna, because we have already configured the uh, connections, let's say the bindings, it's gonna use those connections or bindings to write the values here or actually here to this instance. And then, then we can use the service, which we don't have here, by the way. Let's get the book service injected. Service dot save. I think it's add actually. The book we are adding a new book. Then we can show a notification um, that says, for example, book saved. And if you think about it, when we are adding things here, we click the button, it gets saved, but this information remains there. We maybe want to clear that, correct? So we can we can set a new bin there, new book, or we can actually, for example, use um, read read bin, which is uh, maybe it's easier to understand because I'm using write bin here. So the read bin is the opposite. So read this bin, read the values there in these properties, and set them in the corresponding fields that we already. Uh, configured here as the bindings. So that should clear the form if I didn't make any mistakes and should add um, the books uh, to the database. Let's see if that's true or not. Let's create this book. Very original name, creative, any number there. Save, book saved, it's cleared. Let's go to the admin view. It is there, so it is in the database. Very good, so it, it actually uh, worked. Uh, nothing surprising here, but what it's crazy, it's how easy it is to make it collaborative, I'll show you. Instead of using a binder, we're gonna use collaboration binder. And this requires the bin type, but also a new 
object, which is uh, uh, an object of type user info. I'm going to call it user info, so, so it's easier to understand. It doesn't exist yet, so let's create a new user info. And it needs a user ID, at least, but we're going to use also the name because we want to show the name uh, on the screen. So let's use, for both, we're going to use the same. It's the user name, user name that, that we uh, configured it already. Um, in the Spring security configuration, right? It's the username. So we have two there. Uh, but how can we get that? Well, we have to use security, context holder, get context, get authentication, get principle. And because we were using this method, this builder, we know we are created user details objects. So that's what we need here. Var uh, user details. And of course, um, let's do this. Let's use this user details. We need to be explicit here. Of course, we need to cast that user details dot get username, assign that to username. And now we have the object. Very good. So th these are the changes required by this constructor. Um, now you can see that this is deprecated. Read bin is de deprecated here. Uh, but it's clear in the documentation that you have to use set topic instead. So let's start by exploring set topic. So we need to set a topic. What is a topic? It's kind of a chat room if you wish so all the people are going to be here this so this screen needs a name right like this instance of this screen needs a name so let's say this is a new book any identifier uh, should work and then we need a supplier of books which can be implemented like this new book so of course a little bit more complex than the standard binder because you can uh, imagine that it requires a bit of help to make it uh, collaborative and now let's, let's fix this. And the cool thing is that there is a reset method here, and we can just pass a new instance of book. So it clears the, um, the form after we save a book. And so if it worked, if, it, if I didn't make any mistakes, let's go to this screen. And I probably need to open another one here. So let's do the following. Um, let's bring it like over here and this like that. And let's use, let's use the other user here, Maria. Login. And it was an admin, it was actually a new book. And you can see that as, as Maria is editing this, Alejandro can see what Maria is doing. So. I don't know which book I was in, but um, but we can see that Maria is doing that, right? Writing and so forth. Save. The same for Maria. She would be able to see what uh, any other user is actually doing here. So that's that's pretty impressive, right? Now. Let's say that we want the users also to chat here on this screen because they need to work together. That's also very easy to do uh, with, with the Vadin collaboration en engine. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to change the layout. Let's create some space here so you get the, the idea of what I'm using or what I'm doing. So let's create a horizontal layout here. And Mm, uh, what can we do? Let's create two vertical layouts. Vertical layout. New vertical layout. So so now we don't have, like, well, we have the title and then we have this horizontal layout. We're going to move the other code later in a moment. But we have a horizontal layout that's like having two, like the screen divided in two. Let's go here. Like this screen is going to be divided in two. 
and on the left I want maybe mm, the form so I can just move this over here and on the left we want to implement a chat all right how to do that we need two two new components here the first one is new collaboration message list and let's see what this requires it requires the user info that we have already and it requires the topic id which also we have new book you should maybe uh, create a constant for that but let's leave it as is why because it's here right so we don't need we don't want to have it uh, twice maybe we, we could introduce a typo and it won't work all right and the other thing you need this collaboration messages list is where all the, the messages are gonna appear and we need also a new collaboration message input and that needs the list so we need to extract these to a new variable let's call it just message list and since this is so clear here we can use var message list let's compile that I think um, that's it let's see if it works all right so let's use uh, Alejandro here let's use Maria here and now they should see each other's work right but let's say uh, I'm creating a new book I don't know which layer I was but let's say it's uh, E and uh, I'm editing stuff here whatever and then Maria comes to the screen and, s and sees that I'm creating this um, this book right and so she says hello Alejandro which I reply hello Maria <laughs> and then she noticed something's wrong uh, I see that you are creating the new book you are missing an E in the title and so I see this and I go oh yes I'm missing one yeah yeah thanks I go and fix it save it and everybody is happy now uh, so that's how easy it is to add collaboration capabilities using Vadin.